Hi guys, so this is a video um, request and I'm so sorry but I've lost the comment, I don't know where it is, on which video or whatever of who requested it but if you remember that you requested this video then let me know and I can put your name on the description um, for you so just let me know. Um, so the request was to make a video on how to breed gerbils so I thought I'm going to make a quick one because I'm having problems uploading videos that are more than 10 minutes so if possible and it goes over um, I'll just have to do it in two parts um, depending on how much I go on um, so I'm going to start um, the first thing I want to say about breeding gerbils is that I do not encourage breeding gerbils at all. Um, I've had a lot of people asking me, like sending me messages and asking me um, for advice on breeding gerbils. And like, don't get me wrong, I'm more than happy to give advice um, and like share my experience. This is part of the reason like why I joined YouTube and made my channel so that I could share my experience of breeding um, and obviously like gerbil care. Um, so yeah, I love that I get um, quite a few questions from people asking for my advice and I love giving it to everyone so please don't stop doing that. Um, but I just want to say, like I don't want anyone to think that I'm telling everyone to go and breed the gerbils because I know it's become more of a popular thing um, for people wanting to do it um, for different reasons but um, <clears throat> I don't want to encourage it and it's definitely not the case that I'm telling people to do it like it's completely a person's own choice what they do with their pet and I'm not going to judge someone as long as it's done for the right reasons and with the with the animal's best interests it really doesn't bother me if you want to breed them you know it's it's nothing to do with me but I I will help if someone asks my help so anyway yeah I do not encourage it to like to everyone um in my opinion you should be an experienced gerbil owner like by that I mean you should have owned ger owned gerbils for a while before you consider breeding um, because it's quite important that you know um, not just the basics of gerbil care and like behaviour just from like keeping them as pets but you kind of need to know like all about them I'll film him <laughs> oh god it's not a very good light I'm sorry I'll get that down here um, <clears throat> so what was I saying, sorry. Um, yeah, you kind of need to know quite a bit about gerbils um, so that you're capable of giving them the very best kind of care while they're, um, while you're bringing up new gerbils. Um, so you obviously don't want to um, not look after them properly and things happen. Um, so the next thing is you need to have a lot of spare time to breed gerbils and I'm not kidding when I say a lot of spare time it is so time consuming and I think people don't realise that you can't just go away for like days at a time or weeks at a time and just leave them because the babies are so vulnerable and also so are the parents like the, the mum the mom. When she's pregnant, she needs extra, extra care, extra food. So you really need to be aware of this if you're wanting to breed gerbils, but you don't really have that much time. Um, then I'd wait until you do. Um, it worked out really fortunate for me because I never planned to breed my gerbils. As some of you will know if you watch my older videos, I used to think Harry was a male. Um, until he got pregnant, she got pregnant, and now she's obviously a female, um, but I used to call her he in all my videos, <clears throat> sorry. So, what was I saying? Um, yeah, lots of spare time, it worked out 
that when she happened to get pregnant, I I was off sick, on long term sick for my job because I got really ill. Um, so I was off for like six months. Not that it takes six months to breed, but um, you only need a couple of months really because the babies grow up so quickly. Um, but yeah, so I had so much time on my hands. Um, I was recovering from an illness, um, so I was home quite a lot. Um, and I also lived with my family, so that helped that if I happened to not be there, um, they would be able to check up on them. Um, another thing you need is a lot of space. Um, you've got to be aware that, you know, the average, I think the average number of babies is five or six. That's the average litter size. Um, but it can vary, and it's even been as high as 12. I think the record was 12, maybe it was more, even more. Um, so you've got to be aware that you, you need to house all these babies, and it's not realistic, they're not always going to be able to live that many in a cage, and obviously males and females are not going to be able to live together for too long. Um, otherwise you'll get imperturbables, and you don't want that. Um, so you need to be prepared for these things, you need to make a plan, have spare cages and if you live with your parents and you need to ask permission before you do this. Um, and honestly I wouldn't, I would never consider or tell people to like just do go ahead and do it without asking permission because you don't want to end up having to give the babies away straight away. You know, there could be complications because you'll have to keep them for a while. Definitely while they're still feeding off the mum and everything. So you definitely need to plan it properly. Um, it's also quite expensive. Like, to be realistic, you're not going to make any money at all from breeding. You're, you're just not. Um, and I never wanted to. Um, mine turned into kind of a hobby. Um, because from my videos you can see how um, passionate I am about my animals and like taking care of them and you know I spend so much money on them and it's a lot of people on YouTube do and you know I don't expect to get anything back from them I just want them to have like happy and comfortable lives um, so breeding like you need a lot of supplies and you need a lot of food because you're going to have a lot of mouths to feed eventually so you need to think about that. Have you got enough money to do it? Um, and you also have to have like a real interest in doing it. Like you can't do it just for the sake of it because it wouldn't be fair on the gerbils and there's no point doing it just for the sake of it, um, really. You have to like, it's something I always wanted to do but I never thought I'd get to do it. I didn't personally plan it. It happened, but I knew when it happened that I would be able to deal with it because I thought about doing it um, for quite a long time. The most important thing, one of the most important things, is to make a breeding plan. Um, so you want to write down like where the babies are going to go. You want to write it down and have it organised. Maybe get like a notebook and just keep that for all like your breeding information. So you can always refer back to it. Um, so you need lots of supplies, you need to write down things that you need to buy for the breeding. Um, and preferably you should already have homes lined up for the pups. Um, I didn't do that and I regret it so much. Um, or put the pups up for sale before, way before they're ready and just tell people that they're going to be ready on whichever date. Um, because otherwise... It seriously is not easy to rehome pups. Um, I think this is going to be the end of part one, and I'm going to carry on on a separate video, which I'll upload separately as part two. I've seriously got 30 seconds before it goes over. Um, and I'm going to um, be a bit more brief in the next one. <clears throat> so I hope you enjoy part one. See you in part two.